Good morning, good morning. Um, just as I've gone live, there's much crashing and banging happening outside. What are the chances? Actually, they're pretty high, really, aren't they? I mean, it's pretty common for there to be lots of noise around when I'm live streaming. Um, so good morning to you all. Good morning to chat. Good morning to everybody. Today, I wanted to talk about our go-to craft. So when we're feeling unwell or not feeling at our best or or any of that sort of stuff what is it that you lean towards i know for myself it's crochet i find i, I that's why i always have like a big crochet blanket or something sort of a little bit mundane-ish to um to work on because crochet was my first sort of yarn craft i learned to crochet then i learned to spin and then well i learned how to knit first then crochet but i was very bad at knitting for a very long time um, so I was just making sure, sorry, so I just sort of, I, I was very bad at knitting. Let's just, so I don't actually count it in that sort of era. So I learned how to knit, I learned how to crochet, I learned how to spin, then I learned how to continental knit. Now when I learned how to continental knit, my world changed. My world totally changed when it came to knitting. So I was, so that was a, that was a big moment for me. That was a big moment for me, but still to this day, whenever I'm feeling a bit blah or like my brain is not, not turning things over properly or, you know, when you just need like a little downtime is really what it comes down to. I find I tend to crochet and, um, I was thinking about that sort of this week, I've had a chaotic week, like just doing so many amazing things, like everything is good, don't panic, um, but just chaos is ensure, ensuing. And I was like, I just need to sit and just crochet for five minutes because I found that it calmed my brain. Um, whereas while I love knitting, I don't find that it has the same sort of calming, relaxing effect for me. So which is it for you guys? Do you, do you prefer to have like to go for the knitting or do you crochet or spin or cross stitch? What is it that you go to when your brain just needs a moment just to calm the farm? Good morning to everybody in the chat. Thank you, Crochet O'Clock for bearing with the ad. Um, I very much appreciate that. Um, Gamer Widow says that I was only saying on Tuesday that when I've been either crocheting or knitting something big, I grab my spindles out and Jennifer, it spins. Um, so that's awesome. So we, yeah, so we all have that one thing that we sort of just go to when we're, when we're brain, when our brains are just like melting or, or we're like, I don't know, probably overwhelmed is not the best word to use, but that's how it sort of is with my brain. If things, if I'm a bit overwhelmed, then I can't focus on stuff like lace or something like that. But in saying that, sometimes I need a project that is just insane so that I can just, just focus on the minutiae of the detail of that so that everything else can get blocked out. Some days my brain is so chaotic that that doesn't work. Uh, Stacy, it goes for spindle spinning. What's up, Kirby90210? Do you realize that it... When I just said that, it just clicked, like 90210. I'm sorry, I've always thought it was 90210, and it wasn't until I actually just said it out then. Oh, I'm so slow. Um, Kim says, I play stupid games on my iPad or iPhone. Look, I do that every now and again. I like word, I like those number logic games. They're pretty cool. I, they just shut my brain down. Um, Crochet Clock does granny squares because she doesn't have to think about it to do them. Leone grabs out her sewing machine, makes a few rope bowls or baskets, no thinking need it. Sudoku, see that's the same thing for me, Andrea, game numbers, number games. Okay guys, I have a story to tell, I wasn't going to share it. This morning here at Fibrific HQ, the ladies bathroom is out of bounds because there is an enormous spider in there. It's huge. I went to go to the bathroom and it ran across the wall and it was bigger. It was like blah, 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 massive huntsman. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't need to go to the toilet anymore. That's great. So I ran away. And then about 10 minutes before the chat, I was like, oh man, I'm not going to be able to hold on for hours and hours that I need to go. So I was like, Okay, and then I've come out and I'm like, nope, like, because I've, I've got a door that I go out and that's that's into the shared space. 
And I've walked out and I was like, nope. And I've turned around and I've gone to speak to one of the boys and I was like, is it all right if I use the boys' toilet? And he was a bit like, why? And I went, there's a massive spider in the girls' one and I can't go in there. It ran at me. I said, I can deal with dead spiders. I can deal with spiders that just stay up in the corner where you can keep an eye on them and, like, you stay there. And, uh, you know, you're in a vulnerable position. You're sitting down. Anyway, bad. And 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 so I was just like, okay. So he's he's gone in. He's grabbed this big lump of wood. He's like, was this one big enough? And I'm like, I think so. And so he's gone in there. And I hear this, like, you know, the noise. Like, I think he just did it for effect because he's come out and he goes, I couldn't see it. And I'm like, oh, my God, how could you not see it? It's huge. And he goes, no, it's gone back to wherever it ran from. And I'm like, well, when I last saw it, it was running towards the back of the toilet. And he's like, I, I whacked the wood around there. Nothing happened. And I was like, ah. Um, huntsman spiders are harmless. Actually, they're not harmless. They're not deadly, but they can totally make you sick if they bite you. Like, without a doubt. Like, I've been bitten by huntsmen twice. And once here... And once here, because I sleep with my hands under my pillow, and a huntsman came under my pillow and bit my hand. You get sick. You still get sick. You, know, you don't. You get over it, but you don't die. But it's still not nice. Um, and huntsmen's move way too fast, and I don't like it. Yes, it's worse when they disappear. That's exactly right, Andrea. That's. <laughs> it's going to be on the news. Firebrick HQ burnt to the ground. It's like that meme where the house is on fire and it's like, I think I got it. Totally. Um, Nerdy's been having to deal with windstorms. It's horrible. And they, they're very dangerous when they drop down from your car and your sun buys. Yeah, they cause crashes because people just automatically just freak out. Um, yeah, like Earl Grey Crochet says, hey, have you guys checked out Earl Grey Crochet? Earl Grey Crochet is a new friend of mine. Um, she's totally delightful. Her videos are fantastic and she's a crochet addict just like the rest of us. So make sure after, after this live chat, you guys, you go and check out some of her videos and go and check out what she's doing because it's a lot of fun. And I think that the moment, I'm not sure how long it's been going on for because I haven't checked out your whole back catalogue yet, Earl Grey. Um, but she has bright purple hair like my shirt, like purple, like, Phew! it's wonderful. I love it. He just wanted to cuddle. No, no cuddling spiders. No cuddling spiders at all. Um, now you guys like, um, another thing is there's been some changes that are going to be happening over at Fibre Fit Fun Zone. Nothing too terrifying. Uh, but one thing that you should all be aware of is that Kim now wields a spanner over there as well. So you guys, you have to be friendly and nice or she might hit you with it because that's what she does. Although, Kim, you could come to Fibrific HQ with your spanner and take out the spider for me. That would be great. You could give it a cuddle with your spanner. Um, spiders disappear and then reappear out of nowhere when your guard is down. They totally do. That's exactly what spiders do. Spiders are evil. That's, that's, that's where we're going with this. And no problems at all, Earl Grey Crochet. Like, no problems at all. I love your videos. They're so fun. Um, Kim's going to get drunk on power <laughs> with her spanner wielding. We need, who's an artist in this group? We need a picture of Kim, like with a wielding a spanner that we can post in places. That would be so fun. I'd love that. Kim, probably not so much, but I'd love it. <laughs> I'm just going to have some coffee. Mm. So as you can see here, I have got some grey. It's very dark in this shot. It's not actually this dark in real life. I wonder if I can... There you go. That's probably a bit close. So I'm just bringing the light. That's, yeah. Um, so that's the grey. But here, it's my chickadee sweater, you guys. Totally working on my chickadee sweater. Like, are you proud? I'm proud. Look at this. Look at this sleeve. It's like totally coming along. Like, it's looking like a sleeve. Um, I'm only brave about spiders when I'm trying to get a... Oh, yeah, yeah, see, that's the same thing. If Abby's around, I'm like, oh, it's just a spider. You'll be fine. No. Inside, I'm like going, jelly mush. Um, my kids have been rescuing me since they were old enough to understand that, that the sound of that scream. See, Abby has that scream. She has that blood-curdling, I've been stabbed scream. You go running in, and it's little tiny, 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 tiny daddy long legs. Um, I was reading that huntsman spiders eat cockroaches. Oh, look, huntsman spiders are great. Like, they eat a lot of bugs. I try not to kill them. But 
and like golden orb spiders as well like i have quite a few of those in my yard but they're outside in webs and and you know unless i've walked through the web and become a ninja for five minutes um but yeah it's it's all that sort of stuff yay it's back from timeout um what's back from timeout oh i missed something i missed something in the chat hang on a second i gotta i gotta get to the window that i can scroll um I missed it. Hang on a second. I thought I saw someone say that they were going to do something. Game of Widows. I'll see what I can do with an evil emperor hood and lightning sparkles. Yes. Oh, my Cardi is back from timeout. Yes, my Cardi is back from timeout. It totally is. I'm just got, just realized I don't have my little monitoring screen on. So bear with me for a second while I, you know, get my stuff sorted out. Um, get my things sorted. What's the, What day is it today? I have no idea. That's what I want, YouTube. There we go. I want that. And it's going to have to sit through an ad. I want that one. That will have to sit through. Um, I've got a survey, you guys. Let me do my survey. Hang on a second. Which of these stores have you seen online advertising for? Like, none of them? None. There you go. All right. Um, when you want to really freak out, look up spider wasps. I watch one drag a huntsman across my yard. No, thanks. No, thanks. No, I've, I've seen them before. Not interested. No, no, no. Oh, hang on. Luckily, the volume's very le low, but it's not silent. That was embarrassing. Silence. There we go. Um, so, so it's Thursday 19th. So close to the 20th. It is so close to the 20th. Absolutely, it's so close to the 20th. It's so close to the 20th that last night while watching TV, I was doing stuff with yarn that's not for me. Like, that's all I'm going to say. Um, have you heard about the Mystery Lace Club? Have you guys heard that there's this, this Mystery Lace Club that's happening? I don't know if, I've, if it's been mentioned on this channel 7,000 times. Um, but yeah, so I'm getting ready to ship out the next Mystery Lace Club. It goes out tomorrow. Um, then... Uh, also tomorrow is the rollover date so you need to be in by the end of tomorrow if you want to get into the may mystery lace club is that right april 20 gets you in about yeah yeah if you want to get into the may um uh yeah i'm not i'm not reading any more spider stories it's all yeah it's very mysterious it seems like everything in australia is trying to kill you. Well, not not everything just lots of things, lots of things trying to kill us. Um, most of it's not where I live, thank goodness. But, you know, there's some stuff that I don't like. I don't like, I don't like spiders. I don't like bugs that fly. And I don't like noises in the dark. Um, yeah, I don't like noises in the dark when I'm hanging yarn in the line and all I can hear, and it turns, like, I know, I know in my brain, that it's just the neighbor's tree rubbing on the edge of our roof that we need to get trimmed back, right? And I know that. But when you're outside in the pitch black, taking yarn off the line because you forgot it was out there, it's a monster or a dude with a gun or something. It's bad, whatever it is, it's bad. Um, yeah, it's bad. And snakes, I look, I'm not a huge fan of snakes, but I think I'm more afraid of spiders than I am of snakes. I've, I'm very lucky, like in my yard, like we've been there for 10, 11 years around there now, we've seen two snakes. One was a little whip snake and the other one was a green tree snake that came in under the patio to get a drink of water out of the cat's tonka truck. We had a, we had a tonka truck that we'd push up against the mesh that would get rainwater in it that one of the cats preferred that than tap water anyway. The snake preferred it to. And it was just this little tiny skinny green tree snake. It scared the absolute crappers out of me, but it was more just because it was movement and I don't like things that move. And um, and yeah, so, but no, they, they, I mean, they don't hurt you. Oh, whip snake hurt the cat. That's how we knew it was there because the cat got bitten on the face and we had to take it to the vet. Um, but other than that, it was all good. It was all good. 
Um, so back to our, our topic, our topic of point, um, which is what's your go-to craft when your brain is failing? So a few of us have answered with um, that, that um, a few of us have answered now, but not everybody has. I don't know how many people are here. I have no idea. So maybe everybody has, but I'm seeing names that I didn't see um, before. Yeah. I'm, fo I'm so focused on this jumper. It's a problem. I've got to put it down for a second, you guys, because I've been like working on it like I worked on it last week. I'm, when I say I worked on it last week and I did this, I'm talking a roll or two here or there on a sleeve. Um, I just, yeah, it's it's not like I've been going hardcore, working on it for hours on end. No, no, I haven't been. I've been hardcore hours on end working on the Mystery Lace Club. Sorry, I'll just get that back under the camera. Oh, you guys, I'm not sure if you could tell. If those of you that saw the photo that I posted in Facebook, I've got a new camera set up, so it's literally up there instead of sort of here pointing down. Um, hang on a second, let's see if I can show it to you. It's, I'm really happy. I'm using a mic stand that I normally use for um, other things with some a little knobby connector thing that I bought for something else. And I was sitting here with the tripod that it's normally on like, oh, there's got to be a better way. I'll see if I can just like, hang on, I'm just gonna, wah, bah, bah, there you go, behind the scenes, there's this camera right here. Tap you in the eyeballs. Um, I'll move this back now because I think there's also mess back there, which we can't have you, we can't have you seeing the mess, you guys. It will destroy the illusion. Um, Elle Grey likes to cross stitch if she can't motiv motivate herself to crochet. Totally, that's awesome. I like to cross stitch. Um, says Chantel, who hasn't cross stitched in 13 years except for a little bit of a Darth Vader. Um, but when I was pregnant with Abby, cross stitching sort of saved my sanity. I had so, like, I was bedridden, and cross stitch is a really, really good craft that's, it's like slow craft, if that makes it slow for me anyway, slow craft. Um, and uh, Kim's written, don't forget to smash the like button an odd number of times. She's totally right. Jump up and down on an odd, an odd um, couple of times. Um, Andrew says, does anyone know my card number? Hubby has taken my card with my purse in it and I want to sign up for the Mystery Lace Club. I, I don't know your card number, Andrea. I'm so sorry. I'm very happy that you want to sign up to the Mystery Lace Club. Um, and, but I, I can't help you. Um, Emma says, any crochet project with a long mindless repeat to get into the flow? Totally. I totally agree with that. That's what I generally end up doing is something that just like a C to C blanket or, a, or just granny squares, just something that you're right, just something that gets you into the flow. Um, it's a PayPal sign up. Yeah, so if you've got PayPal um, already set up, you don't actually need your credit card. So that's that's actually a good point to make, Kim. Um, I, have, uh, I have a cool Huntsman mum story, but perhaps this isn't, perhaps not. Maybe go and pop it in the Facebook group. We can have all our terrifying Huntsman stories over there. Um, uh, Lane says I'm working on a C to C right now. I just started it this morning, but tomorrow might have to be a project bag sewing day. Um, yeah, I've oh I've been t I've been playing with a new project bag sort of pat niche thing. I'm obsessed with French seams, you guys, and it's it's ta so sad. It's so sad and terrifying because sometimes I just don't want to line things, but I also hate a raw seam, and I also don't have a serger. And, or an overlocker or anything like that. I've just got a sewing machine. And so I like to put French seams and things so that I have all sealed in seams and no little bits of fluff can get into your yarn or anything like that. I love it. Um, uh, Andrew says I didn't get cake or presents yesterday, so this be my revenge. I can't remember my PayPal details. Oh my God. Can you go to PayPal and say like, forgot password? Cause that's what I do. Um, Gamer Widow says she loves French seams too and hates raw seams. Yeah, for French seams. Do, 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 do nobody capture that. I love French seams. They're so good. Um, we have cool tiny spider species here that are benign. Yeah, we have lots of cool tiny ones too. Um, but yeah, and I'm okay with those. I do tend to trap them with cups because I don't like them running near me. 
but I don't I, I don't like things on me and spiders want to be on me and I don't like it no um where are we yes so yeah French seams is a thing and I just I really really like them and I was I'm having a go at a drawstring bag that's got French seams and I'm quite enjoying the process of it so I'm just going to try and uh, my drawstring strings are a bit narrow so I want to get some thicker stuff um and I hate seeing things that haven't been top seamed properly oh I know it's like I look I'm not a very good sewer okay like I sew for my own personal pleasure and for gifts and stuff I don't I don't sell anything I sew but I hate it when you see something that's either a not top seamed and they just think a pressing is going to keep it there it's like no no it's not um or b that it's like a wiggly like bloop, bloop, bloop line on the top seam because it's like it's i can't get it out of my mind um kim's i have to make a little patch my 300 lockable stitch markers uh, yeah that's a couple of lockable stitch markers kim that i would recommend a pouch um <laughs> oh no, Andrew, the world is against you today. What's today, the 19th? Well, you've got until tomorrow. So will you have your card back by then? So because by like tomorrow midnight or something, I do the cutoff. Um, it bags out and goes wonky. Totally. You're going to have to wait. Oh, so frustrating, Andrea. You guys, like tonight is... Um, so after I finish this live stream today... I will be like toddling off like do, 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 do. got some jobs to do orders to pack you guys know the drill um, and then tonight is caffeinated crafters I love caffeinated crafters so if there's anybody who is in um, the Browns Plains -ish area I mean I'm, I don't live in the Browns Plains area but I still go there Browns Plains Browns Plains Village Square Coffee Club 6 30 till whenever you want we get we have like a lot of us have tea we have drink like coffees and teas and cold drinks and and we would craft crafting happens um lane says i'm just getting back into sewing after not doing it since 1999 oh my gosh i i like that isn't that weird like we go through phases with our crafts like i was a hardcore like cross stitch long stitch insane for like four or five years where it's just all I did and then I felt then I went down the crochet lane and and then spinning and then knitting and so it's sort of like but now I can rotate through them all and I tend to have projects for each medium on the go at once at least Kim says not much crafting happened she's right it's not much but we do have it out it's out and was it last week some lady came over and was like it was so good to see you know people who do this still and you're like there's a few of us. There's a couple of us still around. Lane says, I'm enjoying it a lot. I think I'm, I think I do more collecting fabric than sewing. I had to start sewing because my fabric collection had gotten a little bit out of hand. Um, I totally understand. Uh, I saw a meme or, or something where someone did a thing where they're like, collecting yarn and fabrics needs to be its own craft and I was just like that's so true that's totally true um they the silk they make is useful um <laughs> yeah that's right we can't we can't let people know this this stuff um can you guys see this second camera okay? It just feels a bit weird to me just because I'm not used, I'm not like I can move my arm like wah, I'm not bumping into things. I love stashing, you never know when you might need it. Yeah, I love stashing. I love stashing fabric when it's on sale because fabric out here is so expensive. Like I'm not sure what you guys in the US pay, but like a really good quality licensed fabric, easily 25 to $35 a meter. Um, easily un unless you've got you know some sort of special deal or something um, hang on uh, things are moving except when I have to go get thread or zippers look I stash I stash zippers whenever I see zips on sale I use a lot of 30 to 50 centimeter zips and if even if the longer zips are on sale if you just move your zipper back and cut through it and stitch it down you, you've zip made to order 
Um, we have a chain of thrift stores around here that sells a bag of mixed fabric, 15 to 20 yards for $3.50. Oh my gosh. We don't have anything, well, at least I don't know of anything like that. If anyone in Australia knows of something like that, you better tell me or, or like, I'm gonna get upset. Um, tell me about need to sew up the gorgeous stuff. I keep having to mend stuffed animals. I'm kind of sick of it. I understand. Um, my mum has been collecting a whole lot of fabric and craft stuff for me from relatives down south to bring up next time on holidays. Apparently they need a trailer. I'm not surprised. Like your mum is like awesome at stashing and collecting. So I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised. Does that sound? And where is Shirley, by the way? Like Shirley no longer comes to our chats anymore. You can let Shirley know that I'm offended, that I feel like she doesn't love me anymore. Um, Kim says, I just get the fat flats when they're 10 for $10 at Spotlight. You guys, in Brisbane, like for those of you local to Brisbane, there is a company called, oh, I screw it up. I think it's East Coast Fabrics. And they have these amazing deals where you can get, like if you jump on their mailing list, I think at the moment, even right now, I'm not 100% certain, $5.95 for most of their fabrics. And it's all really good quality quilting cottons. And it's gorgeous. And the store is really tidy and really well sorted out. Um, then like, and when those fat flat, when those um, things are like five ninety five, even their licensed stuff comes down to like $10 a meter. I just go in and go like, I'll have two meters of this and two meters of that. Um, Oreo, you missed so much. Honestly, I don't even know how you're going to catch up now. No, I'm kidding. Um, you missed the spider story, which you can rewatch later. And um, then uh, we're just talking about the crafts that we love to do when our brains don't work, like our, our default craft. That's, that's a good way to think of it, isn't it? The default craft. Um, uh, Shell says, hi, but her internet is terrible and her chica and can't do the live chat. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, I do understand then. Um, Nerdy says my mum mailed an enormous amount of cross stitch stuff from her stash. That's brilliant. Good morning, Tamantha. Welcome to the chat. Um, Kim says I went to East Coast the other week, but didn't find much I wanted. I did get some zips and iron in fleece. Um, Kim, they just had like they've just announced one of their stores is closing, so I'd go back in and have another look because I think the other stores are going to get all their stock overflow. And you just have a look around. They have heaps that, like, you've really got to have a look. They don't, like, have a section. Well, they do have a section for, for licensed. It tends to be near the, near the register on the back wall. Um, and you walk down there, but, like, heaps of Star Trek stuff, heaps of Star Wars stuff. Um, can I be the American and ask, what is a zip? Are you talking about zippers? Yes, we're talking about zippers. Absolutely. Sewing in zippers. Um... Because I forget, you guys call your postcode zip code, so it's it's probably confusing when we're talking about zips. Um, there was no Spider-Man stuff. Oh, it may have all just sold out. I bought some Spider-Man stuff there a while ago, and some, um, and what else did I get? Wonder Woman and some other bits and pieces. Just had to check. No, I totally understand. I was listening to a podcast the other day, uh, Dear Hank and John, for those of you that are interested. I love Dear Hank and John. It cracks me up every week. Um, those two boys are insane. Um... And they were talking about like, they had uh, someone write in from Canada and she was talk like asking about like food to eat as a uni student while you're studying that's not too hard to make and also not expensive because she's just living on um, crafts and Timmy's and they didn't know what Timmy's were. I don't know what Timmy's are. We, we really, we, they really think that it might be something to do with Tim Hortons no idea. Not a Canadian. So if there's any Canadians here, you can let me know what Timmy's are because I I thought Tim Tams. Uh, Earl Grace says, I didn't know you watched Dear Hank and John. Oh, I love Dear Hank and John. I'm a, I have to confess, I am a bit of a um, Hank Green, John Green tragic. I listen to Anthropocene Reviewed. I listen to Delete This. Like all of the... All the um, it, basically everything. I don't watch all the crash courses or anything like that, but I always watch Vlog Brothers. Oh yeah, tragic and sad is what it is. 
Tragic concern. Crochet clock says it's Tim Tams. So that's what I thought of when they said Timmy's. I thought Tim Tams. But Nerdy says, and Gaming Widow says that it's Tim Hortons. So that's coffee, right? <laughs> I don't know. It's just, hang on, I've got to move my chair forward a bit. There we go. Um, yeah, coffee, isn't it? Um, I've never eaten a Tim Tam, I think. Oh, you guys. I've been I've been hunting. I've been hunting because... um. Because, 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 let's not use proper English. Because over in the thread on the Mystery Lace Club on Ravelry, I asked for some input on some extra bits and sneaky bits to pop in for people. And there have been some amazing suggestions and I'm really happy about it. Um, and I just thought that I would try and find some like, because they used to have little Tim Tam packets, like a couple of little fingers in a pack. Because I can only send it if it's sealed. I don't want to open up a packet or anything like that. Also, I can't send a whole packet to everybody because I'm poor. Um, and it would work out very interesting. Uh, hang on a second. We've lost its crochet o'clock. Now she's off on Tim Tam memory. <laughs> totally. Crochet El Grey says, I haven't listened to Anthropocene Reviewed, but I started listening to Delete This over the weekend. Love it. Been watching Blog Brothers since 09. Yeah, I've been a hardcore fan for a few years. I don't think quite that long, but for a few years. Um, I've never had Cadbury's Flake either, and I bet that's amazeballs. Look, I'm not a huge fan of flakes. I think they're boring. <laughs> I do. I think it's like you might as well have just a piece of dairy milk. Bored. I want cherry ripe bounties. Turkish Delight. That's they're my three favourites. Um, I'm totally sitting here thinking about the moments when I ate. <laughs> we know, Crochet O'Clock. We know you're sitting there. We can all visualise your face because we've seen that video. That video is precious. I love your video of your unboxing of your yarn and <laughs> opening up the Tim Tam. It, just, oh, it, was, it was just purely honest. I loved it. I loved it. Notice stitches, oh God, I love Bounty. Yes, me too. Uh, it's sad. I love it so much. That will be like, I could be doing fantastic on like a food plan diet thingy, doing really, really well. My husband will come home from filling the car up at the servo. He'll be like, oh, I picked you up a Bounty. I'm like, oh, meh, meh. doesn't matter. I can't, I don't even think. It's like Bounty food, eat it. There's no, there's no, um, there's no conscious thought of, anything same thing with cherry ripes and turkish delights say like any other chocolate i can be a bit like i might put it away and i'll have a bit now and i'll have a bit later and i'll save it but when it comes to turkish delight cherry ripes and um uh and um bounties they're just gone instantly it's like must eat them because they're so good what is bounty and cherry ripe they are chocolate bars crochet clock they're chocolate bars cherry ripe is a is like um a, it's like a, a longish flat it's very thin and it's coconut with cherry mixed through it coated in chocolate it's very delicious bounty bar is like these little oh hitler but you know little logs little logs <laughs> they do look like little logs they're just cram filled with moist coconut yum anyway i'm my mouth watering now thanks guys um summer rolls yeah i like summer rolls too Cherry ripe is cherry and coconut with dark chocolate. Yeah, I think you can choose whether it's dark chocolate or not, Kim. I, I don't normally get the one. Crochet clock is allergic to coconut, you guys. Oh, my God. I stuffed myself stupid on cherry ripe when I was pregnant. I drank, I drank strawberry milk, and I hate strawberry milk. Strawberry milk is yucky. But I drank strawberry milk while I was pregnant, and now Abby's obsessed with strawberry milk. So, you know, though, yeah. And mandarins, because that's what I lived on, strawberry milk and mandarins. Not at the same time, because that would curdle in your tummy. Come on, extra knitting needles of that section. Just stop poking me. Uh, <laughs> you said moist. <laughs> Do any of you have that problem with that word? Because it's a word I use all the time. And I, I didn't really consider it an issue until Abby started picking me up on it. Um, I ate carrots and chocolate pudding, because that's appealing. Yeah, yeah, we all have these strange mixes, don't we? Um, games just, they're a once a year thing for me just so I can remind myself that I don't like them. Oh, okay. Right. But you do like bounties and Turkish delight, right? Nerdy is a raspberry craver when she's pregnant. Wow. I didn't, what did I, so I was like, oh, corn on the cob, fresh corn on the cob. I really, I went hard on that too. 
And Tamantha just can't eat chocolate. Oh, man, Tamantha, you'll just have to make some Turkish delight yourself and don't coat it in chocolate. It's different. It's much more fragrant when you make your own Turkish delight because you use, you know, the rose water seems a bit heavy, but it's very nice. It's okay to use when describing cakes. Turkish delights, mine, I don't share them, but you can have the bounties. Tanya's pregnancy food was fried rice. Corn on the cob with butter on it is divine. It is. And just a little bit of cracked pepper. Yes, that makes it just perfect. Guys, guys, I have to tell you something. I have to tell you something. Sorry, food has made me think about it. I'm on this new diet eating plan thing. Just giving it a try out because it's like got all meal plans and everything. But you go to the shops and buy it all yourself. And, um, and one of the snacks is rice cakes with this hummus mix and you're actually supposed to get the hummus pop it in your blender add jalapeno ch um chili and something else but i forgot to buy the jalapenos so i'm like well i want spicy did they so i've been getting hummus on rice cakes with sprinklings of hot chili flakes oh my god it's so good it's so good it's so bad though because i'm supposed to have two and I, it's like for a snack two for a snack but it's like, no, this is lunch, man. I'm having four. Bam, bam, lunch. <laughs> so good. So good. Um, damp is a disgusting word. I don't... I, um, crochet says, you should check out street corn. It's a Mexican thing. It's absolutely wonderful. It's grilled corn on the cob with chili powder and crumbly cheese. <gasps> that sounds amazing. Um... Aria says, I need to send you some ice cube chocolates. They are made with hazelnut purse. I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to look that up. Um, I, I haven't had an issue with it yet. Going Postal is an insane book. It's so good. Nerdy loves caramel, everybody. What are your favorite caramel things? Oh, hang on. I have finally used up the bit of skew whiffy yarn that I had laying around. So I've got to get it off the ball now. Um, I'm going to try... I'm listening to Terry Pratchett books at the moment. No, you're not. You're listening to me, right? Um, oh, it's a puree. It's a puree, not a purse. Sorry, sorry. Um, I think I was confused because there was a picture of a purse as well. <laughs> um, try it with sweet chili sauce. Try try the hummus with sweet chili sauce. Is that what you're saying? Because I'd do that. I would try that. Um, I never, ever... Like, I like hummus, right? Like, I... Uh, uh, I like some hummus, all right, guys? Some hummus is horrible. Some hummus is divine. This particular one I've got is a really nice, smooth, yummy one, right? And I like it. And I like it a lot. So luckily I bought a one kilo tub of it. That's two pounds for, for those of you on, on the old measurements. Um, and or just uh, it's just over two pounds because a pound is 450 grams. Um, I'm over hummus since I quit being vegetarian. Oh, look, I'm not vegetarian or anything like that, but I like stuff with flavor and it's got good flavor. Nerdy says her taste completely changed. I um, totally understand. Kim says apparently beetroot hummus is a thing. Look, it is. I saw the ad. It's a stupid ad. It's dumb. Like seriously. Nerdy's now craving barbecue ribs. Thanks, Nerdy. Now I'm craving barbecue ribs. I hear about these amazing barbecue ribs you guys do over there that put our barbecue ribs to shame because our barbecue ribs are pretty lame but I see yours and just go oh like Homer Simpson drool for sure um but yeah it's it's one of those things it's totally one of those things you guys we end up on the weirdest tangents hey like now we're talking food again basil pesto hummus is really good I haven't tried that I haven't tried I've got some basil that I've got to use up before it dies um look i made this stupid mistake of buying all these fresh herbs to cook with right and yeah i'm totally cooking with them and and i'm putting them in everything but the bunches were just so big that they're gonna rot and i should have just i knew the second i was like looking at them in the store i should have just spent the money and went and bought plants because it's just ridiculous and i actually think this weekend i'm going to get my herb garden back up and going again the problem with it was the chickens liked the herb garden and so I had to try and protect it and guard it and all this sort of stuff and it was just annoying and eventually it died and so now I'm like right I've got to get it back because I'm using it all again 
I made just a normal, everyday, boring chicken salad the other other day. Tossed in some fresh basil, um, some sprouts, and also what else was there? Uh, fresh basil, a mint, mint, and she's got just that little bit of extra oomph. Um, I bought a mini rose and a crochet magazine for my birthday. Oh, I love mini roses. And which crochet magazine did you get? Details, please, nerdy details. Um, Kim says put the stoop. Oh yeah, they're in water. I've got them in a vase, um, but they've got no roots on them. They're all trimmed off. They're annoying ones. Um, Aurea says I'm lucky enough to live in one of those U.S. cities, barbecue cities. Oh, uh, yes, I've heard about some of those cities. Chop the herbs up and freeze them. Hi, Nat. How are you going? Yeah, I think that's where I'm going to have to go because I don't want to waste them, but I also don't want them dried because I've got dried herbs and. They, uh, dried herbs are fine, but sometimes you want fresh. Crochet World, I did a flip through my on my channel. I'll have to have a look. I'll have to have, go and have a squiz. Um, so yeah, oh, hang on, my watch is called my knitting. Um, but yeah, like the other thing I do, I will quite often, like if I'm gonna be making like meals that require like chopped up, sorry, I'll put that back under there, chopped up like capsicum and stuff like that. One, two, three, four. Hang on, just let me just double check something here. So one, two, three, four. One more row before the decreases. Sorry guys, I've just got to keep an eye on that. Um, yeah, so I, I will actually chop up things like capsicum and freeze that. You put it on a tray in like little cubes and freeze it. And then once it's frozen, you can drop it into a Ziploc bag and, that, and they don't stick together. But yeah, but like you can't put it in a salad because it does go a bit soft, but you can cook with it and pop it in spag bog and, and other dishes that make your capsicum a bit softer. But yeah, so many ways, so many ways to save stuff these days. It's so good. I love it. I love it so much. Um, so we've got, what have we got going on here at Fibrific HQ at the moment, other than the Lace Club? Like lots of stuff, guys. Things in the works, things in the works. I'm trying to be very good, oh sorry, trying to be very good at keeping things secret squirrel. It's very difficult when I talk to you all so often online here and like try and like have these shots so you can't see what sort of, like I can see just over there is something you're not allowed to see and just over there is something you're not allowed to see. So we've got stuff coming. Um, notice that I have like a ton of different types of robe bushes. I have like four. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, because I've got the two minis. Um, but yeah. Um, and you want more, like roses or those things. Like, I don't know what your weather is like where you are. I think you get real cold weather. But over here, the roses just like, they look after themselves. You can run over them with a lawnmower and they'll come back. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's just one of those things. Um, because I know this because I did, I ran over one of my minis with the lawnmower. Well, I didn't. Um, See, now I want to gate crash and live stream all the secret stuff. Well, you can't. I got the doors locked. You can't get in, Kim. I've got, so you know, he's got two climbing roses, two minis and one conventional. I've got four conventionals and two minis. Two minis, yeah, that's right. I've actually got this really cool plant called, um, is Chinese Emperor I think that's what it's called Chinese Emperor it's got these white flowers see I'm allergic to so many things right can't have jasmine can't have gardenias things like that but this Chinese Emperor has a smell like a gardenia but I don't get the reaction and I love it because I love gardenia but I just also don't love what happens to me um, it's more the hair appointment that's stopping me oh fair enough fair enough. are you gonna have new hair for tonight Kim um, oops, hang on, I just gotta flip this over. There we go. Um, not good with plants, says Tamantha. Yeah, look, you know, I'm good with plants for a while and then I get bored. I have the attention span of a child. Um, and so if they can't survive by themselves when I go through my bored phase, then they die. And they die a sad, lonely death. Um, Nerdy says I also have three types of sage, daylilies, and a lavender. See, I'm allergic to lavender but not allergic to rosemary, which is weird um, because they are the same genus, but there's something about it that's just not anyway. Um, but yeah, I don't have any herbs at the moment. No herbs. 
Um, I've got lots of what else? What have I got in my yard? I've got I've got a lemon, a lime, mandarin, lemonade, which is like a sweet eating lemon basically. Um, um, the strawberry guavas, no cherry guavas. They're called cherry. It's just because they're little. Cherry guavas. Then there is all the bottle brushes. Oh, I've got a white, um, a white mulberry. Um, yeah, I've got, I've got a few. Diff I've got a quarter acre block, and so um, with a little house on it. So I've got lots of, lots of ground that I can fill with stuff. Um, so yeah, all right, we are coming around where I've got to remember to do. Do you know? I find ferns are really hard. I, I don't cope well with ferns, you guys. I tend to overwater them or underwater them or something. They're not happy. They're just generally not happy with me. Um, so I cannot keep ferns except for the, the um, there's one fern that's a noxious weed here and I have plenty of that. Plenty of that. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, there's, messages coming up from instagram hi l gray crochet <laughs> oh kim killed a piece lily um kim says i picked up four imperial mandarins the other day maddie ate four in one afternoon and would have had more if i hadn't cut off the supply we have um what's is it not the imperial mandarins but we have another i can't think of the name of what it's called but basically, it, they, they're they just slightly later season than the Imperials. Uh, but they're identical, basically. They're soft, loose skin. And we've got those growing just outside. Oh, sorry. Um, just outside of our lounge room. And so we do just duck out there, grab one, peel it, chuck the skins into the chickens and, and walk around the yard eating it. So good. Um, oh, it's, yeah, it's the plant that they put in the shopping centres. It, yeah, it might be an emperor. It, I think it's an emperor um, mandarin. So nice, so nice. And it's such a sweet little tree. Like the, the actual tree is no taller than me. So what am I, five foot two, five foot three? And it's a bit shorter than me. Um, can you reach it from the... No, you cannot, Kim, you thieving thiever. Um, but yeah, it's... it's be they're beautiful, beautiful mandarins. Um, but you know we never get enough to share because the tree is still quite little we first year we got six mandarins the second year we got about 20. um i think this year so far i can see maybe 30 or 40 on there i'll see which ones we get um we have a honey mercot mandarin oh nice i like the mercots but it, yeah their skins are not as baggy i like a good baggy skin mandarin um because they're easier to peel I'll have to message Abby and Bribe her to steal me something. She totally would. She'd be like, if you just tell her mum doesn't want me to have one, can I have one of your mandarins? And she'd be like, yeah, sure. And just go out and get you some. That that would be it. Um, she, she would, whatever, to upset mum. Like, I'll just steal mum's stuff. It's fine. Um, I have to make sure Abby doesn't take photos of my stuff to put on her Instagram feed because she'll like take a photo with like all the stuff from Mystery Lace Club in the background. I'm like, Abby, no, you can't put that photo in. <laughs> Not that I think any of you are following my daughter on Instagram, but I don't want the photos out there in the world. Not yet. Not yet. Very soon, you guys. Very soon. Um... Yeah, a very loose skin mandarin plus a six-year-old means no mummy intervention. Oh, that's right. That's exactly right. Um, Aurea says, all my apple twee... Twi I can't talk. Apple twee's a dwarf. Apple tree's a dwarf. Um, yeah, I know she's your Facebook friend, Kim, because I stalk my daughter on Facebook just to check who's following her and who's she's messaging. And Anyway, <laughs> I'm that parent. I'll be like, what are you doing? Who are you messaging? You show me your phone right now. I, just, I do. I do spot checks. She, quick, just hand me your phone. And she unlocks it and hands it to me. And I'm like, da, da, da. she's like, what are you doing? I'm like looking at all your apps and your messages. She's like, I'm like, she's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. Like, da, da, da. so she's used to it now. Um, I think Abby just got a few more Instagram followers. <laughs> oh dear. 
But yeah, no, I do. I'll be like, because she'll be like, can I put this photo up and you have a look at it? And you'll be like, yeah, yeah, that one can go up. And then she, she even made an Instagram account for Snowy the dog. I think it's called Snowy the mini foxy. Um, Snowy's got a few followers. And Abby Instagrams with Snowy's voice, basically. It's very funny. It's very funny. I'll see if, actually, I'll see if I can find it. Hang on. Because my phone's just right here, you guys. Let's see. Let's see if I can Instagram. And then I've got messages in Instagram. Stop that. Um, Snowy the mini foxy, did I say? Let's Snowy. Oops. I can't spell Snowy, apparently. Snowy the mini foxy. Let's have a look. She's got 25 followers. Uh, mini foxy cross chihuahua. And Snowy's put a birthday in and everything. And all the cute photos of Snowy. Look at that one. I remember that photo. That was cute. <laughs> but anyway, you guys don't need to. Snowy the mini foxy. Um, but yes, I'll put my phone down now. So I'm not, I need to put it back to what it was. It's got a job. It's got a job. Do your job. Um, upside down, Miss Jane. There we go. Um, are the other followers dogs? Look, I, I would have to have a look. I haven't actually checked Snowy the Mini Foxy's followers. <laughs> so, yeah. Abby likes Instagram, does lots of stuff. Is it? It's, it's like Tinder for puppies. I, I don't think so. I, I, it's just pictures of the dog. <laughs> Snowy's a bit old now. So, she's a bit ornery. If you go to, like, she'll be laying, like, she'll lay on our bed, right? And we'll go to go to bed and she will literally like get off my bed and we're like it's our bed so we have these fight these um these fights with the dog mr mr tibbles does not have his own uh instagram because he sees the camera and runs away normally so nerdy wants someone to make her a cup of tea um sorry nerdy i'm a smidge far also a bit busy right now um but if someone else can make nerdy a cup of tea that would be really good I know that feeling though where you just don't want to make it and you just I just really want one and I just don't want to make it. You guys have to tell me when my knitting goes out of the shop. I'm not used to this new camera location, so it's it's more natural for where I like to sit and knit, whereas I'm used to sort of having to be skew wiffy. Oh no, um it's not Mr. Scribble. Um that was Oh, what's his name? I can't think of his name. Upside down, Miss Jane. Mr. I can't think. And it's the steam. There's the steam thing, steam engine. Um, <laughs> on the way, nerdy, be there in five hours. But nerdy's tired now. Crochet o'clock. Uh, is it Mr. Scribble? Mr. Squiggle. Thank you, Mr. Squiggle. That's it, Mr. Squiggle with the pencil nose. That's right. And he does all his drawings, and then Miss Jane's like. Yeah, oh, I don't know what that is. And he's like, upside down, Miss Jane, upside down. And so she has to turn the white row around. And the steam engine, what's he, What's the steam? And his eyes like, hurry up. Oh, my gosh. That's a blast from my childhood. I used to watch that show, like, all the time. I loved it. I always be like, what's he going to draw? Nerdy says our dishwasher is broken. I think you should just burn your house down, Nerdy. Honestly, if your dishwasher doesn't work, what is the point? Gus. Yes, Gus. Oh gosh, my eyes are a bit itchy today, you guys. Sorry, I keep rubbing them. I've got to stop. Um, Miss, build a steam shovel. Steam shovel. That's the word I was trying to come up with. Steam shovel. Okay. Oh, did I start the next round without doing the decreases? I did, didn't I? I'm not going. I'm not going to go back. I'm really not. I'm going to just fudge it. Um, Oh, the cat paws on Oreo's tablet closed the window. Oh my gosh, I didn't know cat paws worked. Uh, Andrea's dishwasher is broken as well. Hurry up was from the blackboard. That's right. Oh gosh, you guys, this is just, this is the worst. You've all got like bad stuff going on with your dishwashers. I better not have anything happen with my dishwasher now. Because like... I'll tell you something really funny. Tim's always washed the dishes, right? And that, that was always his thing. After dinner, he would wash the dishes every night. He would wash all the dishes 
and and because like I cooked, so that's the deal. Then when we got the new kitchen put in, his one his one request was a dishwasher. And it was just his one thing he wanted. He didn't care about the stove. He didn't care about anything else. I could have whatever else I wanted as long as there was room for a dishwasher. So I put, so we, when we, we did it, we designed in for a dishwasher and we got it all sorted out. Now the thing is he only washes up what fits in the dishwasher. So everything else just stays on the bench until I hand wash it. So he just like, but every now and again, I'll be like, I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. And I'll just leave it there. Like I'll rinse it all out and everything. But it's normally like this big, tall cereal container. It's nothing gross. And, um, and eventually he'll, he'll wash them up. But we have this like battle of wills. But the dishwasher was a good, um, I don't know, like eight years old or something. And you know the little, like the runners, the little wheels on the runner things, and they'd sort of perish over time. And so ours was like, it was, it was getting to the pointy end. It was like, they kept popping off and we had to keep putting them back on to get it to work. Anyway, um, I jumped online and grabbed, you know, hit one of those good spare parts places and got all the runners. And like Tim's coming home from work. He's like, what did you do with the dishwasher? It's like you again. And I was like, does that mean you're going to wash all these? And he just looked at me like, but anyway. Um, no, because then you won't be able to wash your cooktop bits. I know. How good is that, you guys? Um, Andrea has a major tangle in her yarn, guys, and it is driving her crazy. You need to untangle that crap. I've always wanted my name to be called out on Romper Room, but it never was. But you know what? In my brain, it's always Romper Stomper. And, you know, because she had that thing that she would say, Romper something, Romper do... Who's going to be here looking at you or something like that? Um, bye, Jennifer. Have a great week. Um, and so, yeah, in my brain, it's always romper stomper, but my name, my name never came up either, not even close, because they weren't like, you know, I was a 80s kid, like 70s and 80s kid, and, and there weren't many kids called Chantel back then. It seems to be a bit more common now, but back then it was very uncommon. Oh, I nearly forgot to do my increases again. Gosh. Da, 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 da. They're done now. I'm, I've got to remember to do it at the end. You guys remind me to do my, uh, not increases, decreases. Decreases at the end. Game Wheeler says, Romper Stomp was filmed near where I live. <laughs> See me walk so straight and tall and won't let my basket fall. Oh, yeah. Gosh, you guys, talk about memory lane. Memory lane of all these kid shows. I was watching something with Abby a few, like when she was younger and I knew all the words to, to some, I can't remember what it was, honestly. And she was just like, oh my gosh, how do you know this? I'm like, they've been, it was play school. It was the theme song for play school. And, and she was like, how do you know this? I'm like, it's been the theme song for like 50 years, Abby. Nana knows the theme song. And she was just like, oh, so shocked. So shocked. Um, bend and stretch. You guys, you're shocking. Bend and stretch, reach for the stars. Oh gosh, I'm gonna get copyrighted now. Agro's Cartoon Connection. Oh my gosh, you know, I used to love that show so much until I met Jamie Dunn in real life and then I stopped watching it. I can't deal with Jamie Dunn. He, yeah. Different people for different people, but he's not people for me. Young Talent Time. I remember laying on the floor watching TV, watching Tina Arena on Young Talent Time and Joey something or other, Joey, oh, I can't remember his name, gosh, I used to like Dungeons and Dragons, do you remember the cartoon of Dungeons and Dragons where the kids got trapped, they went on that ride and ended up in the real, and you know, there's the magic kid who screwed everything up all the time, that would totally be me by the way. Um, but yeah, that was one of my favorite shows was that Dungeons and Dragons show. Joey and Natalie, yeah, possibly. Um, yeah, and little Tina, little Tina floating around. Meal of Fortune, I don't remember Meal of Fortune. Yeah, but yeah, so that, they, that yeah, so many shows, so many shows. And I look at like the options that Abby has and like short of ABC Kids, there's not a lot really. Um, well, you know, now that she's older, it's not an issue. But back when she was younger, it was like, oh, well, our TV lived on ABC too. 
Yeah, yeah, there was a Vince. Vinny. Vinny? I think it was Vinny, not Vince. Ah, oh, they probably are Vince as well. There was so many of them. There were so many um, of the young talent team. So you guys that are like not from Australia, young talent time was like our version of the Mouseketeers. So where you got Britney Spears and, and Justin Timberlake, we got Danny Minogue and Tina Arena and stuff like that. Um, Nerdy's getting a TV for her birthday. That's awesome, Nerdy. Probably a 40 inch LED smart TV. I love my smart TV. I really do. I love it a lot. Um, I think they're very useful. So I can watch YouTube on it. <laughs> yes, you can. You totally can. Um, I'm not, there's some, like, I know that with, with the live chats and stuff like that, things appear a bit differently. But yeah, I watch YouTube on my TV. It's great. And I also, like, just cast stuff from my phone to the TV as well. Like crafty classes and stuff too. Um, like I love putting crafty up on the TV and just watching a class while I'm doing stuff. Don't have to worry about using up my laptop battery. But yeah, I just cast it straight from my phone or from my laptop straight to the TV. It's great. Um, I can type on my iPad. Yes, you can. Totally, totally you can. So you guys, um, what have you all got planned for the next couple of days? Like, are you going to be working on any particular projects or um, just like what's going on in your lives? We've talked about my spider scare this morning. We've had a talk about your go-to craft when your brain hurts. Um, so what is your plans for the weekend? Um, I'm planning on Saturday to get a little bit of work done in the morning and then I'm going to be totally having just a sit back personal craft and binge watch TV because I found oh my god lost in space the new season on Netflix is great it's totally off the uh, like it's not it, it's got totally different storylines in the old episodes but it's really really good um Earl Grey says we have a Google Chromecast it's my favorite I love Google Chromecast it's the best uh, Nerdy says I have my Saturday knit group um Kim has started her pixel her pixel blanket, which is Spider Man blanket for Maddie. Seven hundred and twenty two round granny squares for the main section plus the border. You're insane, Kim. Um, El Grey is going down the coast with her family for her grandma's birthday and just finishing a blanket to gift her to. Is that the blanket that you put on Instagram just before? Because I'll totally be checking it out. Um, just not yet. Just not right this minute. Andrea says, crafters tonight and hopefully... Are you coming to crafters tonight, Andrea? I was like, what? Um, and hopefully I'll find some fabric at Spotlight um, so I can work on my friend's patchwork. I'm an Apple person and love my Apple TV. Oh, that's so sad. No, <laughs> I understand Apple people like the Apple stuff. Um, Nerdy says, I'm crocheting a scarf and cross-stitching in a 30-day challenge. Oh, that sounds fun. I was going to look at some alpacas. Are you looking to buy alpacas, or uh, Earl Grey says, yes, that's one. Okay, cool. So when we go and have a look on um, on Instagram at Earl Grey Crochet, that blanket picture is the one that she's talking about. Hey, are you all doing knit in public day? Um, I don't normally because that involves me being in public and I don't do that so well. Um, but there is normally a couple of things around. There's not normally a lot around. I probably could run one, but I don't want to because that would involve me being in public. I like this. I like I like this. This is good. <laughs> um, yeah, cross stitch on one work in progress for 30 days. Ah, oh, that sounds cool, nerdy. Um, just deciding on which color I want and working on a test knitting for the weekend. Oh, the color that you want for your new hairstyle, Rebecca. Um, Kim says we knit and crochet in public all the time. We do, yeah, because like caffeinated crafters tonight, we tend to have projects out for us to work on. Um, oh, bugger, hang on. I've got, I am going to go back. Just a couple of stitches, you guys. I got to the end of the row. I didn't realise. The rows are getting shorter and shorter, funnily enough. Knit two together. Bim, 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 done. Okay, now back to normal. Back to the normal knitting. Wow, that got really blurry. Focusing little camera. I'm so excited to see what Kim does today. 
Oh, with her hair, because she's getting new hair. New hair, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't wait to see what she does. Actually, I don't have to wait. I'm going to see it tonight. Um, only when you don't forget to decrease. Yeah, I know. Um, here we go. So the sleeve is getting narrower. I'm concerned because my arms are enormous. And I'm like, is this getting too narrow too soon? I don't like this. Um, but I'll find out soon. I'll give it a little try on later on. Um, I need to put a longer needle in the in the um, body to get it, you know, over my body. <laughs> it's like a main event when Kim goes to the hairdresser at Five Rubik. <laughs> it is a bit, isn't it? Because Kim gets such exciting stuff done to her hair. Um... My mum would like to see me with light pink with purple highlights. I like that idea a lot, Rebecca. I don't know your. I don't. I don't think I know what your face looks like, um, but I like the idea of those colours together. Sorry, I did put a thing down so that my stitch marker wouldn't be quite so noisy, but it's being noisy. Um, there we go. I've got to get my hair done again. Abby has made me promise to let my hair grow out, you guys. So I've got it's going to be going a bit longer again. I don't know how long she wants me to make it grow. I don't want it real long. I don't like it long. So I, like you have to brush it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like it's all the all the little shaved sides are now like this long. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. They were shaved down to seven, like number seven, but now they're getting all long. So my little curls are coming back again. Get them straightened or something. Um, but yeah, hair. Hair is hair is a good thing, sort of, sometimes in some places, not everywhere. I'll stop that stitch marker of doom. Hang on, I'm just gonna, there we go. That should be less noise now. Sorry about that. I know the microphone picks it up. My last color was a pinky purpley color with darker strands like a semi-solid yarn. It looked very nice, and I'm sorry that I couldn't dye you yarn to match your hair, Kim. Um, or I lost her connection again. Ah, oh, Kim has a three-blade undercut. Um, I had a seven, and I liked a seven. A seven was good. Number three seems very short. Um, I don't even think Tim gets his that short, actually. I didn't know you had an undercut, now that I think about it. Um... Oh, Grace says, I keep thinking I should shave parts of my hair and then I'm like, yeah, nah, a little too drastic for me right now. <laughs> I'll just have purple hair. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a big call, shaving bits off. I saw this amazing hairstyle. I was so tempted to cut it down. Um, Crochet Clock says, my hair's down to my bum, but it's curly, so you can't really tell. I haven't dyed my hair in every year trying to get it healthier. I wasn't ready for the amounts of grey I have yeah see that's my issue i've got a lot of gray and so i i don't feel that i'm old enough to have gray i mean obviously i am otherwise i wouldn't have them but um i started getting gray at 16 and i don't like it so i still dye it out and every now and again i think i should just embrace the gray um but then i go nah and then go a different color nerdy has a big old gray streak i've got a big old gray streak it's called this <laughs> Um, yay. Oh, hang on. Long, long, long hair here. Must have to get it cut at some stage, maybe. Um, Spotify served up a talk talk. I don't know what that means. Um, oh, okay. Kim says I got an undercut, so when I put it, the short bits don't reach the band. Okay. I'm over 40. Grey happens. Look, I'm over 42, but um, I'm... I've been getting grey since I was 16, so I've been fighting it for a really long time. <laughs> so, and I'm still not ready. I'm just a kid at heart. I'm just a big old kid. Um, and I'm not ready for grey hair. I'm really not. So I just, I know one day I'll be like, you know what, don't care anymore. But at the moment I still care. And I'm not, I'm not overly um, vain about a lot of stuff, but yeah, that's, that's one thing that I, you know, that's one thing I do. Crochet clocks is about half and half now. Look, I think I'm nearly um, based on what I can see when I let it, like before I have it dyed. I'm pretty well about 90% grey now and I don't like it. Um, except I'll tell you what, like it's all grey down this side, 
but it's only gray at the back on this side in here is not gray like up here is gray here is gray here is gray here is gray but all down one side is not gray it's not balanced and it looks weird um i went blonde so my grays don't show yeah i understand that that's why i've got blonde bits so my grays don't show up quite so much that's why i've got like these little bits here these little tufty bits um due to get small but non-gray show <laughs> they do yeah too broke for haircuts yeah look they are definitely uh, like getting your hair colored and cut definitely a luxury um i don't really have many luxuries that i'm like fastidious about but that's one just getting my hair done so you know t it is totally a luxury and i do get that um oh guys we are it's it's actually 10 past 11 which i cannot believe I cannot believe it. We've only got about 20 minutes left to go. Um, I'm going to put the knitting down just for a minute. Just my hands are hurting a little bit. I've been doing so much dyeing and I've been doing some really fun stuff, which I cannot show you just yet. Um, but it's a slightly different dyeing technique and my hands have to do a bit more work. And so they, they've been getting a little bit sore. Like you can see, like look at all the dye in my fingernails. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but yeah, it's really, um, my hands just a bit sore that's all it is uh, knee stuff knee stuff is going well physio is happy I'm pushed out to once every three weeks now which is great um, I'm still just be building strength Commonwealth Games didn't do the greatest things for my legs just walking around to the events and stuff um, probably did way too much walking which made them a bit sore but yeah it's it's one of those things um, um, yeah, nerdy says uh Earl Grace teacher says you could start cutting your own hair nerdy and just don't get too carried away that's actually totally a point I used to trim my own hair many many years ago before I could afford regular haircuts my knee is it's had better weeks um but it's doing okay it's actually the muscles now that are tired and sore rather than the actual knee so that's really nice too that's a nice change show your nails nails again I didn't quite catch the color the color is murky brown it's a blend of like 25 different colors that I've been dying with over this last week. I, I wear gloves, but I have little blowouts. So, you know, um, I've trimmed my hair. Yeah, uh, Nerdy's knee is being a bit of a jerk lately. I get that, jerky knees. Um, sorry, this chair, I didn't grab my roller chair. I've just got a little wooden chair and it's not comfy for this long. I can't use it anymore. Uh, so that's why I'm getting a bit wiggly is because I'm a bit my butt's numb I have a numb butt so I'm just wiggling around to try and you know be less numb and scrunch the hands up so that they're not hurting anymore um, chocolate coffee a latte um, so mystery lace club is not brown no it is not brown I can I will confirm mystery lace club is not this brown murky greeny brown color it is not that um chocolate coffee latte um i knew that's what you oh i knew that's what kim was going after as well totally but i also knew i wasn't giving anything away like i could just put that right there and there's no way you'll know what color the mystery lace club is um i hate mauve okay <laughs> fair enough fair enough um i I don't know if I have a colour I really actively hate. I'm not a huge fan of that real like khaki murky greeny colour. I don't mind the khaki browny colour, but the khaki green, not my thing. But other than that, I think I pretty much like everything. Like I kind of have to really, don't I? Because I find it really difficult dyeing yarn that I don't like. And so I really don't like... Um, like every now and again I'll get a colorway where I'll just be like it's not quite for me like but that's more things like like this sort of stuff like I loved dyeing this and it's come out so beautifully but I wouldn't be able to wear it because of how yellow it is I can't do yellow but that's not that I don't like yellow it's just I can't do yellow um, and then there was where is it um, I think I sold it. I mean, there's these sorts of torpy colours. But again, I think it's because of the yellow in it. Like, it's a, it's what's, it's ochre. Like, this colour's called ochre. And it's like a really soft, like, torp, uh, like, 
I don't know. I mean, that's that's nearly accurate there. It's probably... There you go. That's probably better there. It's got like a hint of something to it. Um, and I think it's just because the yellow, like because of the pinkness of my skin, the yellow is not good. Um, Kim says, Tamantha, I don't think we can be friends anymore. <laughs> I'm not okay with lying green, says Crochet Clock. Um, Nerdy says she likes clown vomit. Okay, Nerdy. That was, that's, that's a lot of detail there. And pastels. You like everything except for boring colours. Um, oh, I have that. I, oh, I love that. I love that. Sorry. That red and yellow. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think it's gorgeous. I just don't think it's for me. It's one of the new Milky Way colours. This is pure silk. This is, this is just, this is lovely. But, um, yeah, not for me. And who was it that said they don't like lime? Cause like, you got any limer? <laughs> it's very, it's a, that's probably more accurate. The colors on that screen there. It's very bright. It's very bright. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's more that there's colors that I personally can't wear rather than colors that I don't like. Um, it's there's some like I'll walk like I'm that person that will stand in a shop like in the doorway and scan the room for a color that just calls out and then I'll go over and touch it but I don't like how it touches I'm not even gonna try it on oh no game of widows just accidentally ordered a Spanish peacock Russian spindle oh no what a terrible terrible mistake you must never cancel that order um, that red and yellow together makes me vaguely nauseated. <laughs> so that's the thing. We've, we've got colors that we, we do and don't like. Like that's the thing. And that's why I can have all these colors and I have to make all the different colors, like the pastel tones and the bright colored tones. And you know, um, Kim says, I hated pink when I was younger, but when I started working in IT with an all male team, I started getting pink everything so they wouldn't steal my stuff. And now pink's grown on you because you know what? Similar thing happened to me with that fiberific green. You remember fiberific green, the original yarn ball guy? Um, I'm not like, I was, was having problems with Abby Nick and my stationery and she didn't like this like really bright green. So I was buying everything in this bright green and it really grew on me after that. Um, I like red and I like yellow, but not together. I understand that. Um, my training mate has all these tools painted hot pink for that exact reason. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, like if things don't bother you, then you can do it to stop other people from nicking your stuff. Um, Tamantha says, life would be so boring if we all like the same things. Wouldn't it ever, Tamantha? That's something I love about the human person is that we all like different things and we all dislike different things. We're all vocal about the things we like and dislike. But like I look at like some of those, like some dystopian movies and stuff like that where everybody's wearing the same outfit and it's literally like looking at a world of drones and we're not a world of drones. We are a world of human people with our own um, ideology. We, we have our own beliefs, our like every you put 20 people in a room and there's going to be something they disagree on and there's going to be something they probably agree on as well. Um, Oreo says anything bright I love but bright pink and green is my downfall like as in bright pink and green together or you don't like bright pink and bright green um, agent Smith clones yeah yeah that sort of thing that sort of thing um, I was reading what was I reading I was reading something where everyone wore gray jumpsuits everywhere just because it was so convenient um, Game Widow says it's probably why I hate school uniforms so much. Yeah, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of school uniforms, but I also understand why they have school uniforms. So, um, like, um, like for those of you not in Australia, uh, in all Australian schools have school uniforms, whether they're state school, like public schools, or whether they're private schools. Um, I think it's very, very, very rare for a school not to have a uniform. And it's like a, and like for the state schools, their uniforms are generally cheaper than the, the private school uniforms. Um, like I know that Abby's blazer was bloody expensive. Um, but um, whereas like my, my nieces and nephews, their school uniforms are, are pretty, um, pretty, they're not, they're not too expensive, like in the scheme of things. Um, 
but it's good because it means that if you're in a, uh, in one of those sort of socioeconomic areas where the local school has got kids that are quite well off and kids that are not well off at all, I'll just hit this camera, um, then having the uniforms means that other than wear and tear and whether they're new or second hand, then you, everyone's sort of on a level playing field. There's no one like in like fully branded out gear and kids in like Kmart shirts and stuff like that. Um, and not that Kmart's bad now. Kmart's cool now, but you know what I mean. So, and I actually, so I think that in that regard, uniforms is good. I think that schools could design their uniforms a bit better for Australian temperatures, like seriously. Abby is at a school, we're in Queensland. She is now having to wear a blazer to and from school every day because it is con technically considered their winter term. It was 30 degrees the other day. So luckily they just have to wear it to and from school. They can take it off at school, but geez, it's insane. Um, oh, Aria says together the pink and the green are her favorite. Um, and Gamer says, I'm annoyed the fact that girls' uniforms cost more than boys. Yeah, that's annoying. That You're right. That's totally annoying. Girl shirts. But, I mean, that's across the board. I don't know if that's an... That's totally an international thing. Women's clothing is generally more expensive than men's clothing. There have been all sorts of studies and stuff done where, if, if like, two shirts that are nearly identical, one's in a men's section, one's in a women's section, the women's thing is invariably more expensive. It's just kind of how... Like it's how it is and it's horrible. So I will quite often hit the boys section for stuff for Abby. Abby will be like, oh, I want shorts that do this, like like these ones. And I'll be like, just just hang on a second. I'll just go into a boys section. I'll be like, what, like these ones? And she'll be like, yeah, like them. And she'll try both pairs on. She'll be like, oh, I don't know which one to get. And I'm like, get this one. It's like $15 a pair cheaper. You can get two pairs of these for the same as one of those. Look at hairdressers. Oh, totally, totally. I mean, my particular hairdresser, they're really well priced, but some hairdressers are insane. Just insane. The difference between a women's cut and a men's cut, like a similar amount of work, and it's double the price easily. Crochet Clock says there's commercials running in the US about the pink tax, and it's all about this topic because everything for females is more expensive. Yeah, we had something similar. Um, I don't know if we called it a pink tax or not, but it was like razor blades for women. Like they are identical razors and the women's one is ex more expensive. And just like all sorts of stuff that everyone uses. And because it's pink or it's, you know, just a sp specified for a woman. Yeah, it makes me it makes me crazy. Thank you for bringing that up, Gamer Widows. <laughs> it's a good topic though, because it's, you know, we, we're all women in this group. Shampoo and conditioners are totally, totally up there with that. It's insane. It's so many things. The checkout run segments on this. Yeah, that's right. I love that TV show. Um, T-shirts, socks, absolutely. Sports socks drive me insane. I hit the men's section for sports socks whenever I can. I need a particularly small men's sock because I've got little feet. But if I can get it, I do because the socks, they get more pairs for the same amount of money. Ah, uh, tax on feminine hygiene products. Let's not get me started on the fact that apparently female, fem like feminine hygiene products are considered a luxury um, because we all decide to have this function happen to our bodies. Um, and it really, it bugged me back in 2000 when I found out that it was put in the GST list. In Australia, we have general sales tax across the board on everything that's not fresh food, that has not been in any way manufactured. So like a bag of apples doesn't have GST. What, like, sorry, loose apples doesn't have GST, but chopped up apple does because it's had a process done to it. Um, and so, so basic fresh fruits, vegetables, meats, things like that, things that are considered a necessity, like um, rent on a house, things like that, no GST. But things that are not a necessity, TVs, electrical products, um, uh, everything else that's not a necessity like rent on commercial properties everything else has a 10% GST 10% general sales tax and that was actually a good thing when it first happened because TVs used to have the sales tax of about 20 to 30% on it but now it's only 10% so in that regard it helped but for some reason female products the female hygiene products in specifics get GST because they are produced item and it's it's insane it's absolutely insane because um yeah
Uh, like that's a rant and a half topic right there isn't it like who pressed that button someone was like let's press Chantel's buttons <laughs> you guys must know by now I have some serious list of things I have opinions on <laughs> I really do I really do um yeah so it's totally a luxury item apparently do you want to borrow some of the American feminists to lobby against this um well, I think like the Australian feminists tried really, really, really hard for a really long time and nothing has happened. It's I'm sure that, you know, getting some American feminists on board and calling Australian politicians dumb would be really helpful. But I don't think it's going to change anything. I honestly don't think it'll change. Um, I don't know what their logic was to add it in. Like, does anyone actually know? The logic that it was was used to add it into the GST or was it just because it is a produced product rather than a piece of fresh fruit I don't know because toilet paper has GST because you can there's all different grades and you kind of need toilet paper right maybe that's the logic they used um, medical aids get a GST free condoms and lube have been classified as such but anything from oh yeah that's what I forgot about that Mm. Yes, as usual, as totally as usual. Oh, I just got to wiggle back. Um, I'm just going to lean here like a big old leany slug. Um, they're mostly men. Is that a good explanation? Oh dear. Yeah, yes, they are mostly men. We don't have very many women in politics at all in Australia. I wonder why. Um, <laughs> I don't know. They possibly do crochet a clock. I don't know what they're thinking. Honestly, don't. Uh, there's lobbying on going for female health items to be classified as a medical need. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm sure that it is ongoing and it's it's just very frustrating that it even has to be a thing, right? Because why? Why is it a thing? Anyway, <laughs> this is a ran this is a random top. This is really a random topic for us to hit. Um, Kim, what's the rundown on our topics today? We've had some crazy ones. Um, the ha I'll have to look that up, Earl Grey. I, my problem is I'm allergic to so much stuff. I have allergic reactions everywhere. And so, you know, when you find a brand that doesn't cause it, you kind of stick to it until they change how they make things. But yes, I agree. The, the environmental issue is another thing. Um, it started in 98. The wheels of politics for females went very slowly in Australia. Yeah, because GST came in in 2000 and um, it was a long time of them working on the list of what was going to have GST and what would not have GST. That would be a very bad place. Yes, it is a very bad place to have an allergic reaction, I might say. Um, but yes, so it's, it's yeah, that's, that's, let's, topic change. <laughs> let's talk about something else, you guys. Not that, not that I think the whole thing is a bit, yeah, my reactions to things, that was probably a little too far down a rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, it's it does need to definitely happen for sure because that's insane. It's totally insane. Um, so you guys, we have three minutes. Three minutes. NBN is a joke. Oh, thank you, Game of Widows. Game of Widows to the rescue. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, wow. Um, crochet O'Clock says, tell me about Kiviet. Oh, Kiviet. Kiviet is this most amazing fiber from muskox and it's just divine. You guys have got access to it a lot more easily than me. Um, <laughs> oh, that's the list of things to avoid to talk about with me. <laughs> no, I meant today's list on our topics. Like what do we have? We had projects that we love to work on um, when we're brain tart, like brain dead, spiders in the bathroom, then we had a general spider discussion. Yeah. Um, and then we had, then we jumped, what if we jumped from, from there to something? I can't remember. Anyway, boom, boom, boom. We've had this great tangent today, you guys. Great tangent. Um, uh, I think Coles went through a stage where they reduced the prices. Yeah, I've noticed a, a reduction in the prices in general, but it's not a, a national wide thing and it's not a compulsory thing. Um, Nerdy says, I think I'm going to crochet a scarf with your skein of triangulum. Oh, that would be divine to wear, honestly. Um, 
chocolate and food. Chocolate and food is safe. You guys, because like Mystery Lace Club members score like little treats in their box as well, I have to purchase and test said treats. And um, I, I may have tested one this morning that was very good. So whoever gets that, that, that particular treat, I'm very happy. Um, oh yeah, we had the retro TV shows, colors, hair colors. Gosh, so many things, you guys, so many things. Um, don't forget to join the, continue the conversation over on uh, the Fibrific Fun Zone on Facebook, where you can all continue to chat and post the photos of things, excuse me, post the photos of things that you've talked about so that we can continue on uh, even after the live stream is finished. Um, is it bad I just ordered some fiber because the name was where I was born? No, I'd totally order fiber if there was something called Royal Brisbane Hospital. <laughs> anyway, you guys, it is 11.30. It is time for me to move on to the next task of my day. Not that this is a task. No, I, don't, I didn't mean that at all like that. But I've got to move on and pack some orders and get some bits and pieces out. Um, I've got to get going to finish putting some Mystery Lace Club boxes together. So that's exciting as well. And I will catch those of you coming to Caffeinated Crafters tonight. I'll see you there. About 6, 6.30ish. Um, I have to have the mouse over here because I need to press the stop streaming button in a second. So I'll see you all later. Be good. Get your crochet and your knitting and anything else that you love to do. Get it going this weekend. Have some couch time and just enjoy yourselves. I'll talk to you later. But uh, um, yeah, I'll talk to you later over on the Fibrific Fun Zone. So I'll catch you later. Bye.